I've started this scene. It's uh, supposed to be a night scene on a on a foggy night, and I want to create the effect of the street lighting, lighting the fog. Uh, I'll just explain what's set out already. Um, the the sky, which uh, I've got a volumetric slab in, but I've hidden it at the moment. Uh, this came from night clouds, which uh, you can pick up, uh, or at least you can find here in at Bryce Tutorials, Bryce Downloads, and their night clouds. But that's just to provide some kind of context and, and background. And what else we got? Uh, these street lamps are made in Wings 3D, and they're comprised of the the lamp body itself and a, a glass filter. And the glass filter that's just lit using the global ambient channel, and it's uh, it's just there to create the illusion that it's lit. There are no light sources in this scene yet. Just check that they shouldn't be able to select any light sources which is important and the the moon itself doesn't produce any light in fact I can disable it there's no light output from that the uh, the key is to provide all the lighting within the scene so everything you see like uh, this is a create a cityscape tutorial which uh, once again we can should be able to find on here fairly easily anyway and and the material again for the for the windows is also somewhere on here is a create a cityscape um there's quite a few tutorials now, isn't there? Ah, here we go. There it is. So that's that one that allows you to create the, the necessary shapes for the city, and uh, and and the the sequel to that's how to create these just uh, ambient lit the pattern on the windows there. A few uh, materials from the Bryce5.com's shared library or Bryce uh, Pro. This uh, Transam model from Turbo Squid, and I've uh, used ambient to light the headlights. So at the moment then. All fairly straightforward. What I want to do is add some spotlights underneath each of these lamps. So I uh, applied a, a separate family to each of these so I can get hold of the the glass itself. So if I press Ctrl C and Ctrl V, I can go edit and convert those into a spotlight. And then if I get one of these control dots and hold down the Ctrl and the Alt key, I can reset the size of those spotlights. And we can just have a quick render and see what it's providing. So, pools of light, but with a rather hard edge. So, I'll edit those. I can soften the edge, which makes it look quite concentrated now. And I might want to consider changing the colour slightly. So, I'll make it a yellow, yellowy orange tint, so that uh, it's more in keeping with the colour of the lights. So, I imagine these are going to be sodium lights. And I'll increase the te well. What I can do to see what the effect is, I can render in scene. Then it'll help me visualise what's going on here. So I can see the spots are quite small now, but at the same time, they've got the soft edges. So if I compress these spotlights down, it'll mean that they spread out more. So I'm just trying to get them to a point where it looks like a reasonable amount of light spilling onto the road. I don't want too much. So the next thing then is a uh, fogging effect and for that I'm going to use uh, Dan Whiteside's fog material again. So I'll create a cube and enlarge it a bit so uh, it's in the field of view. Go into the material lab where I saved this material from before. So we'll just, this is Dan's fog and uh, you can see the settings. So these are all white, all the colours are white. Uh, diffusion 100, no ambience, no specularity. Base density of 1, no edge softness. softness. Fuzzy factor of 75, quality of 50. And all it's got is basic shading and sky integration checked, nothing else. So it's not uh, involved in shadow casting or shadow capturing. So if I now introduce this, Let's have a look and see what this effect it's having. So it's made the a bit dimmer and you can see a banding in the sky and that'll be down to the quality. So what I need to do is using the different views I can switch the underground back on so I get an impression is make it a sort of an efficient shape to start with for the bit that I want to have it uh, operating over. So something like that so now it includes these, but this this is not lighting very well because of uh, of the fact that 
it needs to be uh, set at a higher quality so we'll set the quality up to 75 and see if that gives us a bit more light to capture so the light cone is shining down but at this intensity it's not really lighting the fog so what I'm going to do is introduce another spotlight its job it is just to light the fog so I'll take these existing ones and I'll, I'll edit those so that they exclude the fog effect which is on that cube so I better give that cube a name that'll make life easier so this cube which is a fog effect I'll change its name to Dan's Fog Cube okay and then I select the lights again and edit those and then I'll exclude the fog cube from their influence now and so now they just go back to lighting the ground which is fair enough and then control C and control V all those I'll give them a new family and these are going to be the the things that create the lighting effect so I'll just move them slightly in case them being exactly in the same position as the other lights causes a problem and edit those and we'll set things up differently for these so what I'm going to do, I don't know if I use gel selected, is I'm going to use a uh, gradient I'm going to use ranged so that'll, add, I'm going to use none so get a lot more light out of it and I'm, going, I'm not going to exclude the cube so they go the light so we can see a bit of the effect of the light here and then on the gradient the first colour is going to be white then I'll add another point here and that can be a yellowy colour such as the light it's produced and I'll add another point and that can be a strong uh, amber orange colour so and then I can drag the point up there to to control the range so see how that looks now in our scene so let's have a look okay that does seem to be casting light on the ground but doesn't seem to be very strong well if I can right, I'll zoom in on one of these lamps if I can position this light source inside the light itself then it won't be casting light on the ground That's we'll leave that to the other light but because the fog doesn't uh, doesn't have any shadow capturing capability it means that it'll still see this light so I can I can light the fog up with this light without lighting anything else up, providing I've put the light inside something that stops it from casting uh, any light out, which is inside the top of this lamp head. So that's uh, that's covered it up and prevented it from shining on the ground and lighting it up too much. And then what I can do when I've done that is increase the diffuse power, so I get a more spec. Oh, that's probably a bit too much there. You can see the idea. So let's say linear. Might be a bit too little let's have a look now okay right so now you can see we've got there's a bit of banding in there which probably means they're going to have to increase the quality of the the fog cube or try adjusting its height because that will compress the uh, the material together increase its density and also by effect increase its quality so that's given us like um, illumination for the fog and if I go back to these fog lighting lights now I can hold the alt key down I can compress them still further so that they more light sprays out and then as I did before I, I can I can take the fog cube and if I lift it up it'll thin it out so it captures a bit less light so I can balance the effect off that way so that's uh, that's creating bit more light on the ground. The sky looks a bit darker than it did before now because of the fog so I'm going to use the image based lighting background which is included in the night sky to lighten it up a bit so that's just to balance things out. Bearing in mind when I introduce the clouds that will have the effect of cutting out more light from the sky so this is once again its usual business of uh, the fiddly process of balancing things out so now you can see we've got this receding avenue of lights you can't see the buildings they're quite so crude now because they're covered up I think what's missing is perhaps some light from the front of this car so 
I'll do a zoom in and relocate so I can see the car and take one of this spotlight so that's the orange spotlight there and copy and paste that and take it down to where the car is and I'll reset the size of it by using the control and alt and clicking on a corner you see that one appeared and then I'm going to have to get a side view on this so I can rotate it in the correct direction to be pointing down sort of I suppose I'll hide it inside the car again so that it uh, it only produces the light I'm going to need two of these I suppose I should give them their own colour as well so I'll apply them to this brown family and hope I've not already used that one and then if I select both of these and edit them so I don't suppose it's, it, it won't be these will be white won't they so I can get rid of I can just get rid of that one oh yeah the selector's got that tiny arrow under it and then press minus it'll get rid of that so unfortunately that menu covers up what I want to see on the screen so it doesn't appear to be doing very much now do they if I try none see a bit more oh yes right so let's see if that's worked I'll just do that area so that's got the effect of the lights and because I buried the, the lights themselves inside the bonnet I think I'll try and move this one so it shows up a bit better then um, hopefully they won't spill out and light the road so that's sort of foggy dipped headlights effect and the last thing I need to do now is uh, if I can find it no not that one I want to, to select the slab so there's the slab and uh, go into attributes and I'll just unlock that and hide it and then that'll put me my clouds in the sky so it's up to me now and no, I don't want those to be a bit thicker possibly so I can just thicken the slab up to create more of a brooding cloud sky effect you see now it's, that's darkened the sky again and uh, what's the render time showing oh, three three minutes which isn't too bad you can create this effect you can remove the direct lighting and use true ambience but uh, then it gets a bit time consuming so I thought this was the most efficient way to approach it although it requires more light sources and more setting up so I'll just pause the video here and we'll see how that looks in a few minutes so uh, that's close but not quite because you can see if you look carefully here there's some horizontal bands that uh, that are a result of not having a high enough quality setting on the uh, the fog material so if I go into the material and just raise the quality just slightly by another 5 so 80 and uh, then I'll test it on a small area and see if there's any banding so that's good and then I'll re-render that so try again and that then is the final render and the end of the tutorial